Himanshu, do you see governments reacting in any way, whether it's been Mumbai, whether it's been Bengaluru, we haven't seen as citizens any change in the way policy planners look at this issue of climate emergency. It's almost as if this are not going to make it top of the agenda. I don't know a single government in India which has made it top of their agenda. Absolutely. Actually, uh, you know, I mean, Atishi was also mentioning climate change, but it was more in the vein of, you know, using as a carpet to uh, push the uh, for problems. The problem, you know, we need to understand that climate change is happening already. And uh, as uh, my previous speaker said, we need to take that into account in whatever infrastructure we build, choices we make. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you know, what are we doing? You know, look at the highways that we are building. The ministry of, you know, Gadkari remains media darling. But that same Gadkari's ministry refuses to do even environment impact assessment of Chardam Highway. I mean, look, and Chardam Highway is such a major intervention in mountains. Similarly, so, you know, even in Delhi, have you seen an environment impact assessment of the flyovers and the metros and of the uh, various other infrastructure which is obstructing the river or the encroachment that's happening on the riverbed in the floodplain? Have you seen an EIA? No, but that? we have the same question. You know, again, I brought it into what's with the coastal road in Mumbai. You know, you yeah. meet citizens, citizens say, most citizens I, I speak to say they want a coastal road. No one wants to look at the environmental impact that it may well have in the future. But the government is building it and the government must do that. And in, instead of opening up more spaces, in, in, instead of creating more informed decision-making process, actually the government seems to be closing down the avenues and openings for the citizens' participation and independent participation, unfortunately. Right. Pro Pro Professor Ravindra, if there was one thing you'd, you'd suggest to the government, what would that be? Well, my suggestion would be that they should immediately set up a task force particularly aimed at mitigating this specific problem of flooding in the city and uh, Sir, a task it, force will be set up a plan with due regard. Sorry to be cynical. We've seen it with even master plans for drainage in Delhi. We still don't have a new master plan in place, even no, though no, there were various uh, plans that were commissioned. I must say that uh, we should be grateful now that the master plan is not yet in place. Because then it would have been an obstacle to work against if we were to build a new master plan that is based on water management. Right. We need to refocus our efforts towards water management. And we need to put in, put in a, a body mm -hmm. which comprises of the D Delhi Development Authority, which handles the master plan, the Disaster Management Authority. We need the Irrigation Department. We need the Delhi government. We need all these responsible bodies to come together to prepare a okay. new plan. Okay. I, 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 you know, I, I, marketing of land sure. that will be based on dealing with the issue of water management within the city. Pro Professor Ghosh, a final word, because as I said, and I told this to Atishi, we've heard this with air pollution every year. You know, the, everyone knows what the problem is. The question is, where is the will to ensure that, it, that you will act on mitigating the problem that's the question absolutely it has to be prevention uh, rajdeep because that is what will save lives livelihoods and our investments number one let's just take it even within the next 12 months mm -hmm. all major indian cities should do a flood risk assessment not just delhi or bangalore or mumbai mm -hmm. because it might be delhi today and it'll be another city next year mm -hmm. uh, secondly we have to ensure that there is no exception to any major infrastructure if it does not do a climate risk proofing in its investment plan, the, there should be absolutely no exception given under any circumstances for we have to stop celebrating concrete and start investing in resilience. That's a nice one line. Stop celebrating concrete, start investing in resilience. My worry, of course, is that those who are our VVIP policy makers, and indeed people like us, we live in our leafy colonies, we are protected in our gated colonies. It's the poor and the lower middle class who are the sufferers. Do they have enough of a say, a stake in our policy planning, or are they simply forgotten except when it comes to floods like we faced in Delhi?